Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and we're back with another Lancer video. I didn't forget, I didn't try to give like over a month between videos, I really didn't. It's been a bit of a struggle bus year for me, and, and it's been really hard to keep up with just even consistent videos. And so unfortunately for the health of the channel, the Lancer videos had to kind of take a bit of a backseat. But now I've gotten a lot more consistent and everything is kind of smoothed out except for the move that's happening in like a month. But you know, like at the very least I can be consistent until then, right? Let's hope that's that's the only thing happening in my near future. Anyway, Lancer, we're back with another how to play Lancer video. This time we're talking about the Defenders, which is probably my personal favorite style of mech. So. The question you might be asking is, what is a defender mech? Well, it probably isn't. You're probably asking, how do I build a defender mech? Which, fair, but what is a defender mech? Let's, let's, let's spell it out for everyone at home who might not know. So the defender mech's primary goal in the battle is to reduce as much damage to their team as possible. Now, this is done in a variety of ways, whether it's providing cover whether it's acting as a meat shield in a sense, getting in the way of the enemies, or whether it's just finding other ways of negating or reducing damage that you and your allies might take, the defender is the core of the team as far as where positioning needs to take place, as well as what how much punishment the team can take overall as the defender is the first line of defense when it comes to enemy fire or enemy attacks, uh, like biological creatures jumping on you, for instance. So, let's get into it, shall we? So, first of all, let's talk frames and systems. What frame you pick is probably the most important decision of anything else you can do as a defender and as any other class of mech. A lot of mechs can be turned into gunboats, artillery ships, whatever. Granted, some mechs are obviously better at it as they have innate bonuses for it, but a lot of them can be geared. Even the defender mechs can be geared to be a striker as they just have better defensive stats overall and might give cover to allies, but, you know, they can still shoot weapons and, and do a lot of things. But defender, it's important because what matters is how much HP your mech has per structure as well as your mech's armor value, because not all mechs even have armor, and armor reduces damage by a lot, unless you're dealing with burn, and also some of the mechs offer resistances to specific types of damage, further reducing the amount of damage they take in certain scenarios. So you want to overlook your mech, make sure that the frame you're selecting is tanky enough to take a good amount of hits, while also providing enough armor and resistance for certain kind of scenarios where you can gear up against other ones. But more than importantly than even that, you're going to want to look for a mech that has the guardian traits. Now, the guardian traits, which you can actually pick up through the talents, which I'll mention here in a little bit, is 100% paramount because it allows your allies who are adjacent to you to use you as hard cover. What hard cover does, as long as line of fire is drawn through it, which in this case would be your mech, you provide a two difficulty to attacks to your ally. This is absolutely necessary as one of the biggest features of being a defender is most of them get the ability to provide hard cover, whether it's guardian trait or colossus in the case of the Barbosa, This, in the very least, is the basic thing you can do, while there are other mechs who can provide things like cover with various deployables or abilities. It's just important to know that baseline cover is one of the best ways you can defend your allies, as difficulty really does put a pretty massive penalty. Minimum one, maximum six on enemy rolls. It's pretty huge. One last system I want to mention before continuing on is custom paint job. Now, most of the Guardians don't have a ton of system points, and this can sometimes leave you with one or two stray points. Custom paint job is a really good one. It gives you a chance when you lose a structure to avoid losing a structure and instead go to one HP. Granted, you need to make a six on a D6, but that's not terrible. And if you don't have anything better, 
it's honestly better than like a Jericho deployable cover because while that is just kind of stationary and doesn't change anything, this one effect could be game changing for you. So I would say custom paint job is definitely worth the point if you have nothing better to invest in that system point. Because defenders don't really rely on specific types of weapons or traits, I'm not really going to go into that. And there's so many different licenses that provide different types of things that can provide cover and the like, I a lot of it is just based on how the mech does things, and some of them do it in such different ways. So rather than going into specific examples on what you can select as far as like equipment or your mechs, I'm going to go into the talents that you should select as well as the core bonuses that you will probably find handy. So talents, starting off with bonded. Bonded is a great talent tree because it gives you just benefits to you and your Huckleberry, which means you can select an ally who's likely to be adjacent to you in combat, as almost all of their features rely on you being adjacent, and since you're providing hard cover, that's really not a bad thing. You can be a moving, literal defense point for your allies, and in this case, for your Huckleberry, which is going to be really good. Now, the initial talent gives your ally and yourself, as long as you're adjacent, a plus one on skill checks and saves, which is really good and can even help resist against e attack or tech attacks. So that's actually another way you can help defend an ally in a way that you normally wouldn't be able to. Very, very solid. Sundance gives you the intercede reaction, which as long as you're adjacent, you can take damage for your ally as a reaction. Very Guardian-esque, very defender S, I think is absolutely perfect. And then, last but not least, you get Cover Me, which if an enemy is attacking your ally, you can use Overwatch on them, but they get a choice. They either attack your ally, or they can attack someone else. No matter what, your Overwatch is expended. If they attack someone else, you don't get to shoot them, but your Overwatch gets expended. But if they attack your ally, you get to shoot them, and this happens before they're shot. So it's a possibility that you can even stop the attack from even happening if you somehow damage the weapon or even put whatever enemy mech out of commission. So a very powerful effect, and it allows you to defend your Huckleberry even if they're not adjacent. Mostly the highest ranked bon or the highest ranked defender talent in my eyes, but not the top. And we'll get to that one here in a little bit. Combined Arms is another talent tree that I think is very good, though a little bit more on the offensive side of things, because it really adds to the adjacency thing. A lot of what a defender is, is being adjacent to your allies as much as possible, and Combined Arms really can help with that. So the Shield of Blades, which you pick up right when you select it, gives you and your allies, as long as you are engaged, soft cover, and allies who are adjacent to you. That's a one difficulty on any checks to you and your ally. That's really powerful, and it really wants you to be up and close to the enemy right in their face. Another job of the defender that I actually didn't really mention before, because it, it can be kind of played around a bit, but your job is to engage enemies, standing in choke points so that if the enemy wants to get around you, they have to first engage with you. So, that being the case, Shield of Blades allows you to kind of increase your defenses while locking enemies down at the same time. It's incredibly powerful. CQB trained is really good, and it actually doesn't even affect CQB weapons specifically. What it does is you're no longer given a difficulty while engaged when you're using a ranged weapon. Completely fantastic when you're engaged with someone, and it's pretty self-explanatory how this one's really good. Storm of Violence, the last part, is not very Defender-esque, but if you're using a melee weapon and a ranged weapon, this allows you to essentially keep an accuracy on your attacks by swapping which one you're hitting with during your combat rounds. Overall, this can be really good, but not necessary for a Defender, so take it if it's what fits your build. Last but not least is probably, I mean, it is the Defender talent. It just has so many good features, and that's going to be House Guard. House Guard is so good, front rank is very, very solid, as you count as being adjacent to your ally for all effects 
whether they're frame traits, talent, systems, or weapons, you provide those benefits at a range of two. So if an ally is two hexes away from you, or just out of two hexes away from you, no, two hexes away from you, you still give them the benefits of like your guardian trait, for instance. So no longer do you have to be adjacent for them to get the benefits of your guardian. As long as line of fire is drawn through your mech and you're within two spaces of an ally, they get the benefits of your guardian trait, which is super good. And it allows for a little bit more flexibility being a defense point on the map. Greater Guardian is, it kind of conflicts with combined arms a little bit, but this is a really good one because not only does it give soft cover to all adjacent allies, no matter the direction, but this gives the Guardian trait to any frame, meaning that if you're selecting a mech that has good armor and good HP, but doesn't come with it, well, now you can turn that mech into a defender mech by picking this trait up, being a good defense point on the, on the map. It's overall incredibly solid and really, really good. And Shield of the Legion allows you to just add some more damage. Once per round, when you reduce damage, negate damage, or cause an attack to miss an ally, you deal two energy damage back to the attacker. This is incredibly solid. Oh, you also knock them prone, which is absolutely broken. Very, very powerful. Now, I don't know... If the guardian trait, if the difficulty imposed by guardian trait would cause the miss, this procs it or not, it's very vague and unfortunately there's just no answer. Rules is written. I would say if the difficulty itself caused the miss, yes. If if they missed and you were just happening to, you know, imposing difficulty and the the difficulty didn't do anything, I don't think it would really apply the effects, but to each GM their own, I suppose. Regardless, for a lot of the defender mechs, this is a very good talent, as a lot of them do have the ability to help negate damage, especially the White Witch. Oh my goodness. White Witch with House Guard is like a match made in heaven. Now, before I get to the core bonuses and the overall playstyle you should be aiming for, I'm going to ask that you all defend the subscription button down here to see more videos like this. Of course, only if you want. I'm not going to force you to or anything, but if you want to see more videos on tabletop RPGs and Lancer, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to join our Discord where we talk all things tabletop, including war games, I would check it out down in the description below. But let's go ahead and get to the core bonuses. So first up, the first core bonus I would select would probably be universal compatibility. What it allows you to is whenever you would expend a core point to use your core ability, which a lot of the defender mechs want to use as often as they can as they have great defending abilities, you can also choose as a free action to restore all HP, cool all heat. Oh, it's not or, it's and. You may also take free action to restore all HP, cool all heat, and roll a d20. And if you roll 20, you regain the CP. It's a very powerful effect, but more than anything, the ability to restore all heat or all HP is really, really good. You're activating your big defensive ability. Maybe you've already taken some damage. It's a good like mid fight kind of deal when you come to the boss finally or end of mission kind of thing. This allows you to instantly get back up to full. It is important that you keep your structure and HP as high as possible, restoring it as much as possible. And universal compatibility is just a really good core bonus to pick up. As well, you just get the chance to get your core power back, which means you can use your core power multiple times in some missions, which is nuts. Next up is a core bonus from IPS Northstar. So if you're selecting the Drake, which is probably one of my favorite defender mechs in the game, this is one I highly recommend. Reinforced Rain is pretty easy. You just gain 5 HP. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but actually it's immense. Because you need to invest in five levels of hull to match that. Five levels in your hull to match that. That's a lot of license levels. And your hull might already be really good, which just stacks on top. Five HP is not anything you should overlook, especially if your whole goal is to be in the way of the bullets. Another one from IPS North Star is going to be sloped plating it gives you an extra armor up to a maximum of plus four. 
armor just negates all damage that you would take except for burn, which makes it incredibly good and just very solid to have. And yeah, these are not very exciting core bonuses, I admit. But the thing is, is that that's kind of the benefit of them. They're very simple, but they get the job done and they just statistically make your mech a lot tougher. Just the whole thing is you're there on the battlefield and you're really hard to take down. Heck, these can be even turned into a juggernaut defender build if that's what you really want to go for. Now, I did give a lot of her IPS North Star. The first one was, un was uh, Union, but I'll give one more. I, I normally would do three, but I'll give one more because they were all IPS North Star anyway. That's going to be actually integrated ammo feeds from the Harrison Armory for bonuses. It's actually really good. A lot of the defender style like shields you throw out or everything like that are limited systems. So just getting a bonus of two of that is very, very solid, especially if you're not overly investing in your engineering because maybe you want to focus more on your hull or maybe even your systems so that you can, you know, add more cool gadgets to your mech. So this is a very good one from Harrison Armory overall. All right. So play style. How do you want to play your defender mech? And what strategies should you use on the battlefield? Well, first and foremost, your whole point being a defender mech is you are a moving defensive point on the field. You want to be using ranged weapons. Ranged weapons allow you to station up pretty much anywhere so that you can engage the enemies. And if you took combined arms, like I recommended before, even if you were to engage with an enemy, you still wouldn't be at much of a disadvantage. Not only that, but with House Guard, it allows you to get some extra space between you and your allies, allowing you to more or less sit position yourself in a way that makes it more difficult for the enemies to get a straight line of fire to your mech versus, you know, which means you want to be kind of sitting at choke points or to give additional cover around corners as just standing on the edge of like a building allows your ally to kind of hang it way around the building to fire at the enemies while getting that cover bonus that you're providing. Hopefully you're selecting a mech that is a larger size, at least a size two, size three if you really want to push for it as this makes you an even better shield overall. And last but not least, besides the standard basics of get in the way, lock enemies down and the like, you want to use the stabilize action well, pretty much as much as you can. The stabilize action is incredibly solid, allowing you to restore the HP on your mech and keep up doing your job. It is a full round action, so your only you know recourse is to move, maybe to overcharge to use a boost or any other kind of action. But stabilize is your best friend. Your objective is to stay alive as long as possible so you can keep your allies alive as long as possible and since you're going to be the main target up in the front or right in the way of the enemies you're going to want to stay on your treads or feet or whatever appendages your mechs use to get around in any regard it's all really good i would avoid avoid flying at almost all costs the second you start lifting off the ground the enemies have easy access to shoot your allies which makes it somewhat difficult. So flight is something you're really not going to want as a defender mech overall. And yeah, that's about it. I mean, I'm sure there are many more situations and there are mechs like the Lich, for instance, which is a defender, but it does it in a very different way. And there's just no way to account for how every mech's play style might play. The general gist of being a defender is reduce damage however you can and usually put yourself in the way of the line of fire so your allies get covered. However you do that, whatever systems you use for that is up to you, but it mostly stays the same. Hopefully this video helped it out. If it did, please let me know in the comments below. These videos don't do that well. So if you enjoy Lancer and you really want to see more content like this on my channel or even on YouTube as a platform, please share this video wherever you can. It makes it very easy for me to justify putting the time into these videos when I see that there's an honest desire for them. Beyond that, that's going to be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Lead the bad luck to me. 
and I'll see you all next time. Bye.